I think that this is the most compelling light currently available on the market today in its category. It is the new M20C from Juin, and why exactly do I think that? Well, it is for three reasons, least of which is the fact that I happen to think it looks great. I love the design, styling, and aesthetic of it. But more importantly than that, though, is just its versatility. That is driven by two things. Firstly, we've got this accessory pack that comes with it when you buy the combo pack, uh, and that gives you just more control over the light source itself. So we've got a grid on here, uh, which we'll look at later. You've also got these barn doors, so you've got more control over your light that way. Uh, and that then is coupled with just the sheer power of it, because if we take a look at the size of this, I mean, it is really quite tiny. Uh, and you look there at the uh, size of some post-it notes. There we go. It's exactly the same size. And yet in this small form factor, it's packing 20 watts of power now what that looks like is uh, this if i just turn it on there we go that's at one percent here it is at 50 percent, and now here it is at 100 percent. i mean that is just difficult for me to look into so i'll just turn it off but i mean to get that much power uh, in such a small form factor is pretty uh, astounding actually um, and what that means though in practical terms is this versatility that I'm talking about because suddenly now you've got something that is a really pocketable light and I mean if I compare it to some things that I've got that are pretty similar in the studio the Nanlite Lito Light 5C uh, these are basically the same sort of frontal area okay different shape but the same sort of area on the front uh, they're about the same weight and they're about the same thickness as well so in terms of space taken up in your camera bag or whatever pretty comparable right well this is 7 watts this is 20 so nearly three times the power um, in something that is of a comparable size so if you're going to choose something to take with you uh, this has got a lot more versatility because uh, this one I wouldn't be using that as a key light but actually you know what if I was out somewhere then I didn't have my full studio set up here I could certainly be considering to use that as a key light obviously I'd have to turn it down because that is quite quite bright <laughs> um, but then couple that with uh, these other options you've got in here in terms of mounting and so on uh, and this is what I say it is just basically head and shoulders above everything else on the market today in this category because of this versatility that it gives at a really great price point as well which we'll come on to uh, a little bit later so in this video i am going to go through and do a so, sort of full uh, demo of some of the features and then also talk through some of the pros and cons and also some of these accessories that come with it now before i get into this i do need to say that juin did send me this for review um, however there is a bit of a tale to tell there because um, i've got some other content planned for this channel and for my other social channels and so i've got a whole separate setup going on just over here uh, that i'm going to be uh, filming stuff in and uh, basically i was looking for a couple of extra lights and i did all of my research watched all the youtube videos watched all the reviews and i'd already decided uh, that this was the light that i was going to get or rather two of them so i was going to get a couple of these for this other setup and i'd even got to the point of having them in my uh, shopping cart on amazon uh, just getting a few other things together to add to them uh, so they were sitting there in my shopping cart when i got the email from juin asking if i wanted to check them out so of course i did jump at the opportunity there um, but they sent me one of them now the question is going to be now that i've had this one am i still going to go ahead and buy the other one so that i've got the two that i was originally intending um well I should really keep you hanging till the end and say find out later like any good YouTuber would but uh, I'm not any good YouTuber so I'm just going to tell you right off the bat. Not only am I going to buy another one of them for that uh, actual setup that I was intending but I'll likely buy another couple as well because as I say they are just so versatile and it's something that uh, I can see other uses for in the studio and also uh, outside of the studio as well. So with that said let's just get into taking a bit of a closer look at it shall we uh, and we'll start with the actual main light itself. Uh, uh, without all of those fittings so this is the sort of raw light on the inside if you like um, and what you can see here is we've already seen the front of it that's got the uh, diffusion on it already so the leds are kind of behind that so it's got some limited diffusion going on in there already if we look at the side uh, we've got a couple of big vents going on there on the side on the top and on the other side as well also on the top though we've got the usb-c that is where you charge it you can also power it off that as well now if you are running this at full power at 20 watts the internal battery will last for 40 minutes however if you're running it at more like 25 watts then it'll run for about three hours but like i say you can actually power it directly from that usb-c so uh, either have it into sort of mains going into a, an adapter or obviously some sort of power bank if you are a bit more mobile now on the back then you've got this thing down at the bottom which is the battery it's not removable but that's essentially where the battery is and then you can also see we've got a fan in the back here uh, we've got a little screen there which i'll go through in more detail later and then we've got these two dials which are for making adjustments to the lighting settings now 
mention of a fan might be a potential cause for concern. I talked about pros and cons. Uh, and obviously, if you've got any bit of lighting equipment with a fan in it, then uh, people start to wonder, well, how loud is that going to be? Is it going to come through onto my recordings? Well, if I just go over to their website, they've got a little demo of what's going on with that fan. I can just bring that up for you now. So here we go with the uh, the little demo that they've got showing uh, what's actually happening inside. They have got a massive, massive heat sink in there. Uh, and this is partly the reason why uh, they've got so much power into this small form factor, because uh, it is actually able to dissipate a lot of heat through the uh, through the heat sink combined with the fan. Uh, I should say, though, that the fan isn't on continuously. So when you just sort of fire it up, it's not going to be just going on all the time. It's also a variable speed fan. So it depends on how hot it is, will depend on how uh, quick the fan is but what i've just done is turned it on to full power uh, and now you'll be able to hear the fan if i hold it up to the microphone bearing in mind that i've got a sensitive microphone so likely you won't have the fan there but obviously as i move it away it disappears and uh, you don't hear it uh, so much to the point where when it's at arm's length you're pretty much not hearing the uh, the fan at all. So that is in terms of how uh, how loud the fan is. Just dazzled myself for a second there. Um, and then, yeah, the fan will go on and off as required. But what I found in my use of it over the past couple of weeks is that generally if it's sort of staying on and it's not you know at a uh, high power, and I've generally been having it around the 25% mark, something like that, then uh, either the fan is not kicking in or at least it's sort of coming in and out, uh, but not uh, not necessarily at full speed though. So um, that is a sort of little tour of the actual device itself. One thing that I talked about the pros and cons, one thing that is uh, uh, maybe could have been added into this as just the sort of base device is if it had had a, uh, a quarter 20. So thinking about, you know, the uh, the non light Lito light here, it has got a quarter 20 in the light itself. Uh, this one doesn't have any mounting points in the actual physical light. Uh, for that, you do need to use the enclosure. Now the enclosure does come with it though. So it's not like it's something uh, something additional uh, and this is what that looks like so we've got this cage here uh, and what happens is you just basically slot this in from the back uh, as you slot it in from the back there is this door on the other side there that folds round you can see these couple of rubber feet here those base those basically just hold the light in place uh, it's got a little catch here and um, there's a really satisfying sort of clunk as it clicks into place uh, and one thing I like about this is it feels reassuringly solid you know it's not going to inadvertently come out you can't accidentally click that but at the same time it is very easy to open as well so you know both secure but easy access rather than some fiddly screws or anything like that now once it is in this cage though then you've got a whole host of mounting options so first of all you'll see that on the bottom you've got a quarter 20 so uh, there is how you would mount it uh, then you've also got a mounting here so if you want to attach it to your at the top of your camera, for example, so a cold shoe or whatever, uh, then you can uh, attach it with this. And then you'll see that there are basically three further cold shoe mountings on the top and the side. So here is where if you did have it on top of your camera, then you could attach all of your other accessories or things like that that you wanted to mount. Uh, what else you could do with this, though, is you could actually you sort of mount multiple lights uh, together. So if you've got multiple units, and in fact, they also show that as a sort of demo on their website here, you can see uh, sort of magnetically clipping them, uh, but also over to uh, here, uh, where am I? I'm on the wrong page, part of their page here, <laughs> down here somewhere. Uh, there is a little clip. I'm just scrolling through their page. Uh, there is a clip of them basically uh, daisy chaining them together. So that is up here somewhere. I've probably just lost it. By the way, if you are completely new to the channel, my channel is called Take One Tech because I make all of my videos in one take with no edits. And what that also means is that sometimes I have to scroll like this to find the thing that I was going to show you. Uh, where is it? There we go. That's what I was looking for. <laughs> it is like that. So there you can see a bank of them uh, linked together. Uh, I should also say that you can use their mobile app with these lights and I'll do a separate video all about the mobile uh, app. But what that allows you to do is control as you can see in that little demo there multiple lights at the same time so you can set up scenes click between them or control multiple lights at the same time but anyway i digress uh, that is just one of the other ways that you might want to use these cold shoe mounts to actually mount multiple lights together Another mounting method, though, is if we look at the little door on the back here, um, actually, the entire back of that uh, here is actually magnetic. And what that means is that you can then obviously just mount that by just clamping it to anything metal. I will say that the uh, magnet is really strong in this. I've used lights that have got magnets in before. In fact, this one that I've got right in front of me, the Nun light, uh, this has technically got magnets, but it feels really loose. You know, it's easy to sort of come off. Uh, and I have had instances where I've either just tapped them and they've fallen off or they've fallen 
fallen off of their own accord, seemingly. Uh, whereas this one feels like really solid. It's, you know, you have to pull on it to get it off. Uh, so it's a really strong magnet. So great for another little mounting option there. Um, so that's, in that's it in terms of this, uh, this cage then. But speaking of magnets, that's where this accessory pack comes in. If you buy their, what they call the combo pack, um, and this consists of basically three additional parts. Uh, the first part is that, although I mentioned that it has got diffusion on it, uh, if you want a bit more diffusion, then there is this uh, diffusion plate. And you can see in the corner of that, uh, there are those four little uh, silver things. Well, those are just magnets corresponding to the four magnets on the corner of the light itself. Uh, and this just clips on with a very satisfying clunk as well uh, and that as well is not going to go anywhere those are really strong magnets in fact it's actually hard to just sort of pull it off with your fingers you're actually better to kind of slide it down uh, to take it off so yeah that is not going anywhere next is uh, the uh, grid now a grid the purpose of the grid is that it lets light through in one direction but as you turn it you can see how it's basically just blocking out your view of, of me fortunately for you this time uh, but that does the same thing with the light it basically directs the light out um, in one direction or you know, more or less um, and so this thing as well just clips right onto the front so this is the same thing as I have uh, for example uh, here on my main key light uh, I've got a grid on the front of there which means that the light is just directed towards me and not spilling out over the back wall so we've got that exact same thing on here uh, next up then we've got these barn doors and these also uh, just fit on in exactly the same way uh, so the uh, fittings by the way are all plastic so this is you know hard plastic here uh, and this one as well uh, as is the frame for the barn doors so this is also plastic and just clips onto the front the barn doors themselves are aluminium or aluminium depending on where you are <laughs> and uh, let me just get the logo the right way around there we go uh, and yeah it just works really well there is numbers on these little doors as well because you do need to close them in the uh, in the right order so we've got one two three and four because they're you know slightly different uh, uh, depths of hinges so they all stack nicely but once those all are all together um, then you can see the form factor and like I say you know even with all those accessories on okay it makes it uh, now a little bit bigger than a set of sticky notes but not that much bigger uh, and certainly something that's easy to throw into a camera bag and is really really versatile light so with that said, let's take a look at some of the uh, features of the light itself. And I'm going to uh, do something that's probably uh, not necessarily recommended. But what I'm doing is I'm just going to stand it on the bottom doors to be able to show you these, uh, these menus. So the way that this works is you've got this dial here, which is for actually uh, basically cycling through the menus uh, and this one for actually changing the settings. So here you can see that we're on CCT mode at the moment and probably you might not be able to make out that, but that says 0%. Uh, pressing this button will go to a couple of presets. So press it once, it's going to go to 50% and press it again, it'll go to 100. But you can just turn this dial, uh, you know, incrementing by 1% uh, at a time. Um, currently, we're adjusting the brightness there, of course. Uh, if I uh, cycle through on this one and turn this one you can see how it's going through the different menu options so next down is the uh, uh, the actual temperature of this particular light um, so it goes from 2500 kelvin all the way up to 10,000 so 2500 being uh, sort of more warm light there uh, all the way up to 10,000 being that uh, sort of ultra uh, more sort of bluey light uh, I tend to have my lights in the studio set at more like about 5600 something like that 5400 uh, there we go um, then you've also got the uh, gamma, uh, sorry, the <laughs> the green and magenta adjustment going down from uh, minus 10 to uh, plus 10. Uh, and then the other thing that you've got here is if I just press this button, it's going to cycle through the different lighting types. So uh, again, at the moment we're on CCT mode, but if I press it, uh, then it will go to HSI mode. And here we can change uh, again the dimming of it so we can change the brightness there. But now we can go to the hue. So this is pretty typical that you'll see on these types of lights, obviously at the moment as well so nothing particularly new here but i can go through the full sort of 360 degrees um here of the color spectrum uh, i can just press this and it will go to some presets so there we're at 360 so red uh, then 120 uh, 240 and then back to 360 so we can just sort of do those quick cycles through things and then make finer adjustments with the uh, the dial um, and next up we've got the saturation so the next one down is going to be that color saturation at whatever setting we've uh, set it to uh, we can then go to the next one which is the rgb mode so here is where you've got uh, the rgb and the brightness the sort of dimming there as well so there's where you can just set a percentage for the uh, red green and blue uh, tapping again it's going to go to the effects so 
these are similar effects that you may see on other lights of this type as well. So we've got things like the uh, hue pulse. So going through different colors, uh, we can go through to um, if I uh, cycle through these. Sorry, there we go. Disco uh, firework effect hue loop. Uh, oh, it's because I've gone right to the end. The flash. I'm trying to read these from a distance as well. <laughs> uh, CCT flash, welder, explosion, uh, all of those same kind of things, light, lightning. So these are all those kind of effects. Uh, and then you've got all the parameters associated with those. So the dimming, uh, the speed, and, uh, and so on. Uh, next up, though, is one that is a little bit unique to this, which is what they call music mode. Now, what you'll see for this is that basically it is reacting to the sound. Now, I'm not likely to have a light going in time uh, to the beat of my music, which is uh, <laughs> wouldn't be pretty great. Um, however, you know, if this is something that you do want to have uh, a light that does move in time with the music, then you have got this in here because it has got a built-in microphone that's basically detecting the audio, and then the light is uh, adjusting of pulsing in relation to that. And there are some controls here in terms of uh, you know different color and things like that that you want it to uh, uh, to cycle through. So you can have it cycling through different colors and various different things like that. Uh, next up then on the menu is the language. So uh, English or Chinese uh, or some other options in there as well. Um, and then you've got the Bluetooth. So it does pair with the app over Bluetooth. So you can reset that from in here. And then you have got the firmware version uh, listed on there as well. Incidentally, uh, firmware updates are done via the app. So if you download the app, uh, then you will just be able to uh, compare it with Bluetooth and then update via that. That's how I updated to the latest firmware version. That works really well. There's no, sometimes with certain lights, I mean, this one in particular, uh, for example, if I want to update the firmware on that, I need to uh, just plug in a USB stick and, uh, and update it that way and transfer something to the stick and then transfer it to the light. So to be able to just update it directly from the mobile app is another great little feature. Now I've talked about this combo pack. Let's take a look, shall we, at the different models that are available because actually there are a couple. So if we come over here, uh, I'm looking specifically here at the m20c combo so this is the color variant um, and it uh, also then has the combo pack so we can see here we've got this uh, the barn doors and things like that that we've just looked at you can buy this without the combo pack uh, and the m20c on its own of course it comes with the cage though because that is you know integral to the way that you mount it um, that is 130 140 dollars 139 at the moment on uh, on amazon versus the uh, the combo pack which is basically an extra 30 dollars but to be honest with you i'd highly recommend going with the combo pack just because of obviously the extra versatility that you get in the control of the light. Um, if you don't need color and you are just looking for a white light, then uh, basically the M20 uh, is the, uh, the basically the white variant. So the C obviously denoting color. So the M20 on its own without the RGB uh, capability. Uh, and this is also available as either the standard light um, or you can get it with the combo pack. Incidentally, I should say also in the box, uh, you do get the USB-C cable. It's USB-C to USB-A. So if you want a USB-C, to see you would need to get that yourself um, and then it does also come with this uh, little uh, carry bag that you can uh, put it in however um, I'll likely just be putting this in some sort of uh, foam carrier directly into the uh, the bag uh, the camera bag um, itself or more likely for the other two they'll be just permanently positioned here in the studio um, so I hope that's sort of helped you with uh, getting a bit of a better understanding about that, uh, this light. And it is really um, something that has exceeded my expectations. As I say, it was something that I was intending to buy anyway. Uh, this was sent to me for a review. And as I mentioned right at the beginning, um, it certainly actually made me think that, yeah, I don't just want to add another one, but likely another three or four maybe to the, uh, the mix as well, because it is a really compelling light, really versatile, and I can highly recommend it if you are in the market for a light of this sort. I hope you've found that useful. If you have, then don't forget to subscribe to the channel. More reviews like this are coming along. Uh, and what I'll do is I'll leave a link to some other studio gear related videos over there on the right hand side. Thanks for watching. And thanks also to my channel members for all of your support. I appreciate each and every one of you. Have a wonderful day and I'll see you next time.